afternoon. My name is Matthew Hoffman and this is another episode of Do It Yourself Airstream. Today we're talking about the first of three stages when you polish a vintage Airstream trailer. Today we're going to be working with New Shine, grade F9, and a Makita. Uh, this is a rotary polisher and we have a hook and loop wool pad here and we also have our spur and I'll tell you what all of these are for as we use them. Uh, to start we got to get the pad on our Makita and you'll notice that there's a nice hole in here and generally what I do is line up my finger with the hole here to center it and then drop it straight down onto the polisher. That's a pretty easy technique for getting it relatively close. It's a hook and loop pad with uh, kind of a velcro attachment so you want to make sure that it's nice and attached on there. So the key to a polisher is you want to make sure you're working in low RPMs. A lot of folks think that the faster you uh, have the polisher going, the more effective you're going to be. Uh, this is actually counterintuitive because the slower it goes, the more effective you are. And it's really all about patience. Um, a faster RPM is actually going to burnish the polish. Uh, the aluminum is going to turn a kind of a milky gray. And you're not going to get an effective polish. So from here, we got our pad loaded onto our polisher. And now we have this new shine grade F9. F9 is for heavy corrosion and surface repair. Here we have a trailer that started some polish on the top, but we have a section right here that clearly needs, uh, needs some polish. You can see that we've got a lot of pitting. Uh, as you're driving down the road, this, uh, this is from rocks and dust hitting the trailer. Uh, we also have oxidation. You can see over here it's been slightly polished, but we're going to work on this section right here. Okay. So. To start, we take grade F9, and you get a little bit on your finger here, generally about that much. And I work in 18 inch by 18 inch squares and move all the way around the trailer. This is so you, uh, you kind of methodically progress all the way around, you know what you've done uh, as you progress through the three stages of polishing. So once you have some polish on your index finger, or whichever finger you prefer, I guess, um, put a bit of polish about six inches from one another. And you don't want to use too much polish. Um, this is by and large one of the biggest things that I, I see day in and day out is that people tend to use way too much polish. And this actually makes it a lot less effective because as you're taking the polish and um, putting it into the aluminum over the aluminum, uh, it takes longer to get the polish off, uh, therein taking more time and um, reducing your effect effectiveness. Okay, so I have the polisher on the lowest setting. It's actually at 600 RPMs. You can work between 600 and about 1,000 RPMs depending on what, you're, uh, what you like or what you prefer. Um, I generally like to go about, uh, let's say, 800 RPMs. So I have that set just between one and two. And the, the course of action I'm gonna take here is starting in the upper corner, have a fair amount of pressure, a slight angle, maybe a 30 degree angle, and I move across at about one to two inches every second. And this trailer has been heavily oxidized. I, I'm seeing some surface scratches, and uh, so this is going to take quite a bit of work on this one section. You can see that I'm moving in a back and forth motion which I'll do across this first pass. Okay, so that's the first pass. You can see we got quite a bit of residue on there. This generally looks like there, there was some kind of scratch or a tree brushed up against it. Believe it or not, we can actually get that out, but it's gonna take a lot of time. Um, generally, I'm gonna work in this section right here. Um, in the next pass, you go up and down, vertical. So again, a slight angle. But now we're going down perpendicular to where we were going prior. You can see that the aluminum is actually going in a bit. Now, this is something to be aware of. You don't have to be afraid of it, but if you're working in sections like up here, you want to be very careful not to actually put so much pressure in there that it causes a dent into the trailer. Now, a lot of times, the one pass of F9 on a new, uh, not a new trailer, but something that used to have clear coat on it, uh, you can remove the clear coat and you'll find that it's in great shape. This 
that's on the front of the trailer, right where all of the rocks would have kicked up. And you know, it's, it, it's gonna take clearly several more passes of F9 before we're ready to move on to C. And you'll know that you're ready to move on to C because there won't be any large pot marks or scratches or dings. Um, a lot of this kind of swirl marks definitely comes out with the C, but this needs a couple more passes. So now we have a couple of passes. I think I've done three passes here with F9, and you're starting to see that it's definitely coming out here. We still have some sections where we have some pitting, some pot marks from rocks. Now, this is, very, is generally pretty good. This is ready to move on to C up here. So now is what you can do called spot treatment, where you just take the polish and put it in the location where it needs a little bit more work, and you can just come and focus on these, these select sections. Uh, before you move on to the next step. Now, before I do this, you can see that I've my pad here is starting to have a little bit of sheen to it. This is because the polish has been building up and the pad, the fibers in the pad have started to soak up the actual polish. So what we do to make this, this pad extend its lifespan before we actually have to change the pad is a quick spur to it. Now you can see that the sheen is greatly reduced and you can extend the life of this pad without having to change pads. So then I'm going to do some more spot treatment and we'll see, uh, see a nice shine here in just a second.